Hello everybody and welcome back to Norwich Talk for a third transfer rumour video. Yes, a third. Um, I didn't expect to make this video, to be honest with you. Um, I really thought it would be a case of those two transfer videos and then we preview press and crack on with the rest of the season. But no, as of the pink in this morning, Norwich City are linked with another midfielder. Um, Ozan Tufan being the player, um, that sort of pronunciation isn't too difficult this time, which is great. Um, so, you know, no, no one's getting offended. Uh, also, thank you to whoever it was in the comments of the Sam Bukema video who corrected my pronunciation on that. I am very grateful for that. But as I said, as of the pink in this morning, uh, Norwich City linked with Ozan Tufan. And in today's video, we're going to go over what we know about him and sort of a few thoughts, um, because this is a player with a real sort of pedigree, um, and it's a signing that I would really like to see Norwich City make. He's got a lot of good experience that I think would be really useful for, fingers crossed, I say fingers crossed at this point, I think we're all expecting it, a Premier League side uh, next season. Now, as ever in these videos, as I always say, you'll see text next to me. Hopefully, it makes the video a little bit easier to follow. But as ever, we'll kick off with what we know before diving into some thoughts. So, what do we know about Ozan Tufan? Um, he's 26 years old, born on the 23rd of March 1995, so he's just turned 26. Um, he's Turkish, playing for Fenerbahce, who are currently third in the Super League, which is the first tier of football in Turkey. Um, and he is known as a box-to-box -box central midfielder. Now, for my football manager players out there, such as myself, a box-to-box -box midfielder is the dream. Uh, they get everything done, don't they? Oli Skipper, my most recent Norwich City save, has been an absolute hero as a box-to-box. -box. A very glorious position indeed. And a very interesting one at that. We spoke a little bit about sort of that box-to-box -box gap that is going to be, it's going to need filling, isn't it, when Oli Skip leaves and returns to Tottenham. Um, in Paddy's article, he goes on to say, um, well, he basically, I don't know if he confirms it or not, but he essentially implies that Skip will be going back and that's not really breaking news, is it? It's very sad news, but it's not really breaking news at this point. I think it's probably fair enough that Spurs um, want him back because he is a quality, quality player, um, as we all know. So, yeah, that box-to-box -box midfield position is, is very interesting. Now, I'll tell you what else is interesting as well is that he's been linked with Leicester, Liverpool, Everton, um, sort of most recently in this international break. And last season, according to uh, to the Pinkin and Paddy Davitt, Crystal Palace were interested. Uh, last summer, that is. Now, I didn't only read a Pinkin article on uh, Tufan. I also read an article from TurkishFootball.com where they spoke a bit, a little bit, uh, about Liverpool's interest and also described the Yellow Canaries as having interest, uh, which is obviously Norwich City. Um, and they rated him at £13 million, whereas in Paddy's article, he said £9 million. So if you sort of want to average that out to about £11 million, it would be quite a significant investment um, from Norwich City, which is what I think when a few Norwich City fans including myself to be honest with you when they look at that sort of price you see it as maybe sort of wishful thinking to potentially sign him I didn't I, I can't remember if I mentioned these in the last two transfer videos I think I did for the Will Volks video um, but you look at Yanulis and Ben Gibson if Norwich were to go up that's then £15 million spent on players so you look at a player who potentially could cost Norwich what 9 to £13 million is maybe a little bit unrealistic but we'll talk about him obviously nonetheless and he, again he's a very interesting player and from what I've read about him, uh, it seems like he'd be worth that price. Um, but a little bit more on him. He joined Fenerbahce, um, just quickly, Fenerbahce, I have spelt that right according to Google. I thought it was C before the H, but it's H before the C. Um, and I don't actually know how to do the little line under the C on my keyboard, so I do apologise for that. Um, but he joined Fenerbahce who are currently third in the Super League, as I mentioned, in 2015, 2016, for £6.3 million. Now, it's important to chuck that keyword in there, a reported £6.3 million. That's according to Transfer Market. Um, and he played, he's played a few games, he's played 163 times within that sort of five, six year period. But he's also had a loan out um, to another club in Turkey, so I don't really know what happened there. In 2018, 2019, he went out on loan um, and I did. I tried to do research into it, but I couldn't find out why he went out on loan. He was playing before, um, and I think he ended up playing 17 games out on loan, which is less than what he was playing for Fenerbahce before. Maybe there was a change in management. Um, maybe he wasn't getting the desired game time, ended up getting injured out on loan. I, I really don't know, and, and Google wouldn't tell me, so I don't want to waste too much time looking into it. Um, but he's played, um, as I mentioned, 163 games for Fenerbahce. 
overall. I'm pretty sure that's all competitions, of which within he scored uh, 20 goals and got 20 assists. So it's not too bad, to be honest with you, uh, for a box-to-box -box midfielder anyway. I think the sort of the, the, the stats you highlight for that sort of position are, are usually sort of pass completion, uh, key, key passes completed, which I probably should have researched into, but I didn't nonetheless. Um, and again, international experience this man has in abundance is ridiculous. 58 games for Turkey, scoring nine goals. He scored at the European Championships in 2016, which is unbelievable to think that it was five years ago now. But he scored in that competition. Valuable experience, of course. He scored a few days ago, um, scored twice against Norway in a 3-0 win, and he was part of the team that beat Holland. Uh, I think it was 4-2, uh, of which Tim Krul was in goal. That's the first time he's conceded 4 for quite some time. So he has that invaluable international experience. Now, I'm not scraping at the barrel when it comes to this because he's played 58 times. Uh, and that experience at the European Championships in 2016, he's been playing in the World Cup qualifiers, um, suggests that he must be fairly decent. You know, you can't really look at it any other way, to be honest with you. Um, if we look at his stats this season, which I think are very interesting because you compare it to last season and he's on track for... So I'd say significant, but I think that's a little bit too much of a stretch. He is on track for statistically improvement. He's played 27 league games this season, uh, five goals, six assists compared to last season where he finished on six goals and six assists. So theoretically, he'll be he'll be beating that, which again shows improvement. And 26 years old, um, he's approaching sort of his prime years, isn't he? You could argue he's in them now. And that's only a good thing potentially for Norwich City. Um, you look at signings that we typically make. You look at players in lower divisions who are younger, um, hungry, have a point to prove. Um, whereas this, you know, uh, Ozan Tufan has plenty, a, a wealth of experience is how I describe it, I think. Um, and, you know, his, his stats are already fairly good. And hopefully it would be a seamless transition uh, from top flight Turkish football into Premier League football. Um, I think it's fairly safe to say he will be playing Premier League football next season when you look at the likes of Liverpool, Leicester, Everton. Uh, who knows if Palace will renew their interest and Norwich all showing interest. I think it's fair to say he will be in the Premier League. Um, according to Paddy Davitt's article, um, I think it's the agent of Tufan said that he wants to play in the Premier League. He sees his future in the Premier League. And we know that... Uh, for as much as there is the argument whether it's actually the best in the world, the Premier League is the biggest um, is, is the biggest stage uh, in terms of league football in the world, isn't it? I think every footballer wants to play in there or at least have a go in there, to be honest with you. Um, there is a massive debate to be had, which maybe we'll have one day on this channel about what is the best division. Um, but most players want to play in the Premier League. That's just sort of how it is, whether you agree or disagree, whether it's right or wrong. Um, but to continue what we know about him, now this is what I think will spark the most interesting discussion anyway. Um, so make sure you're listening to this if you want to put a comment down below on what I'm about to say. Because I think it's very, very um, interesting. Again, the word interesting, I'm going to become very upset if I keep saying that word, uh, which I definitely will. Um, but across his career, he's played 83 games in defensive midfield. Um, so that's central defensive midfield. He's played 76 games in central midfield, 51 games in attacking midfield, that's central, um, 18 games in right back, 14 games in right midfield, three games in left back and two in centre back. Um, his heat map across his career will look very, very interesting. I'm pretty sure the entire pitch will be covered. But that is remarkably um Again, interesting. I, I really can't think of any words. I'm going sort of blank here in the brain when I try and think of a different word. But it is. It really is, isn't it? Now, when we spoke a little bit about Sam Bukema, I think it was, rather than Will Volks. I think it might have been Will Volks as well, actually. We spoke a little bit about versatility, and there wasn't really that much to back up the idea that those players could be too versatile. But you look at Ozan Tufan's playing career, and my goodness, that is a versatile player. Obviously, he's very central-based as a box-to-box -box midfielder. That's fair enough. But what is so interesting to me is the fact that evidently he can score goals evidently he can get assists but he's played nearly 150 games if my math serves me right uh, behind sort of the number 10 role so he theoretically can defend as well now this is very important to Norwich City you look at Oli Skip this season he's been really good at defending but not only that Daniel Farker has quite clearly developed his attacking game he scored that goal uh, against Birmingham wasn't it and um, even before the Birmingham goal, you could see that he was desperate to get forward. And Daniel Farke has quite clearly tried to improve his um, offensive side of the game. And I think he's even said that in a press conference before. And I think Oli Skip said it as well. Um, so you look at a player like Ozan Tufan could really serve um, or could really play an important role in this Norwich City team. Now, the, the, the phrase I like to toss about is in transition. And I think you can only sort of really mention it again. 
a player who can defend and attack in transition is going to be incredibly important. Um, and hopefully he can read the game defensively well if he was to sign for Norwich. Because, you know, as I mentioned this in the past two videos, Norwich conceded a lot of goals in sort of the last time they were in the Premier League because of that gap between attack and defence. But a box-to-box -box midfielder, hopefully with very high energy, fills that gap in an attacking as well as a defensive sense. Um, I've got him down here as potentially maybe an upgrade to, to Lucas Rupp. You see Lucas Rupp, you see him playing um, the number eight. We've seen him in the six before. We've seen him in the 10. We've seen him out on the right. Um, it's been said that he can play in right back. I remember saying in the rumour video where he was linked with Norwich that he had played in right back. Um, but he's obviously, I think he's four years younger than Lucas Rupp. He's got a wealth more, ex uh, he's got a lot more experience, sorry, um, on the international stage. Um, which you know suggests that he could be an upgrade to Lucas Rupp, and we know how much Daniel Farker loves Lucas Rupp. So Ozan Twifan could be Daniel Farker's ideal signing. Now, um, I, th there's nothing else to say from me, to be honest with you. I'm very keen to know your thoughts in the comments down below on Ozan Twifan. Um, I really want to see Norwich City sign him. The only sort of potential drawback to the potential signing is if we were to sign him, that might knock a considerable amount of the transfer budget um, away out. I don't really know how to finish that saying, to be honest with you. Um, but I think that's sort of one reason why Norwich City possibly wouldn't sign him. Um, as well as, I don't know how interested Ozanto fan would be. You look at clubs like Everton, Leicester, Liverpool, all linked with him. Um, I don't know if he'd be guaranteed week in, week out football there um, at those clubs. Whereas at Norwich City, I think he probably would. Um, but, you know, it, I, you know, only Ozan Tufan knows what's going on in Ozan Tufan's mind. Um, I've said that name quite a lot now. But, yeah, they're all my thoughts um, on Ozan Tufan. I'm keen to know your thoughts in the comments down below as ever. Now, I'm going to say, do you want to see a Norwich City sign him? I think the answer will be yes. Um, so I'll ask you, what are we making of the price? Do we see potentially Norwich City doing a sort of Unulis or Gibson where it's a loan, then a potential option to, to buy if Norwich City were to stay up? Um, what would your approach be personally to this? transfer other than just to sign him of course but yeah that is everything for today's video if you could leave a thumbs up i would be very very grateful for that if you do enjoy these videos as well um perhaps consider subscribing if you don't want to that's totally fair enough so until next time we'll see you again very very soon